You knew this one was coming. It's Joshua Vergar from Android Authority. What's going on, everybody? And this is the Samsung Galaxy S7 versus the iPhone 6S. These two phones actually have a lot more alike when it comes to design than they might think. The iPhone 6S is an S iteration, so it probably was expected that it was not going to have a different design from the iPhone 6, and that's definitely true. It basically has the exact same body with some improvements in the overall design, including the fingerprint reader that's in the home button and 3D touch that was put into the display. But overall, it's the same metal unibody design that was received quite well, and its smaller stature makes it really easy to handle in one hand. But the same can now be said for the Galaxy S7, as they have finally put the curves on the back of the device, much like in the Galaxy Note 5, so that it sits incredibly nicely in the hand. Now you still have the translucent colors and the glossy finish, but this entire body is now water and dust resistant, which is a great feature that returns in the Galaxy line. But it still holds very true and very well in the hand uh, with the 5.1 inch display, making it so that it's not too big and not too small in terms of its handling. Now, design has always come down to personal preference, so we will leave it up to you to see which one you think is actually the better looker and the better feel. Uh, we do give the iPhone a little bit of credit when it comes to its ergonomics, but the Galaxy S7 is definitely closing the gap on there, and we think that is one of the most incredible feeling Galaxy devices ever. Things start to really separate when it comes to the displays because we have a big disparity in the resolutions and the sizes of these screens. We have the 5.1 inch Super AMOLED display that comes in at Quad HD resolution for the Galaxy S7. Meanwhile, 1334 by 750 resolution is what you get in the iPhone 6S and a 4.7 inch IPS screen. Now, the significant change in the pixel density and also the resolution uh, mean that the Galaxy S7 is being used for even more than just the media, the gaming, and the text that you would see on its screen, but also it's being made to power VR experiences. And also the Super AMOLED screen just makes all of the colors pop, but we will give iPhone some credit for having a nice looking display as well. The IPS screen does a good job of displaying iOS, and it is a pretty enjoyable experience all around, if not quite smaller. If you are a spec hungry person, then you know which one of these two you're going to pick in display. Performance is a little bit more murky. The reason why is because we have two different ecosystems that require very different things from their processing packages. Nonetheless, the Galaxy S7 comes with the Snapdragon 820, backed by the Adreno 530 and 4GB of RAM, though there are going to be versions of the phone that are powered by the Exynos 8890. On the other hand, we have the iPhone 6S Plus, which we'll use for this example, and it features an Apple A9 processor clocked in at 1.84GHz, backed by PowerVR graphics and 2GB of RAM. As always, going by the numbers in this comparison is not very easy to do because the ecosystems require very different things. And that being said, both of the software iterations in these phones move along very swimmingly. Especially in the iOS iteration, you have a pretty locked down operating system, so it is made to be optimized for what is put into the iPhones. On the other hand, you have the sheer power of uh, the Snapdragon 820 or the Exynos 8890 with Android Marshmallow powering TouchWiz and all the refinements and the optimizations that are needed to make it a very smooth experience and thus far we have seen a pretty great experience with this even more toned down version of TouchWiz. Hardware comes down to a number of similarities and one key difference. Hardware has both fingerprint sensors embedded in the tactile home buttons up front and the functionality is largely the same, but we have to see how the Galaxy S7's fingerprint reader stacks up to the iPhone 6S's one, which is admittedly quite fast. In terms of battery, the Galaxy S7 comes with a 3000 milliamp hour battery, which is needed for all of the power that is underneath the surface. But the iPhone 6S has a 1715 milliamp hour unit that everyone pretty much much agrees is not really enough for a full day's worth of use. And finally, in hardware, the main return in the Galaxy S7 is the additional storage. You can expand the storage now with a micro SD card slot, which is a returning feature. And we applaud Samsung for bringing back this feature where a lot of people thought they went wrong in the Galaxy S6. Now, though the iPhone 6S does come with 3D touch, it is a pretty useful feature that does add some functionality that iOS didn't have before and provides some ease of use as long as you know exactly how to use it. Uh, but ultimately, 3D touch is something that still has to evolve, and we are looking forward to see what Apple does with it, and we can see what Android may do with it in the future. When it comes to the cameras, we haven't had a whole lot of time with the Galaxy S7 to really compare its shots to the iPhone or even just to look at the shots from the Galaxy S7. But we will name off the specs and you can wait for a camera shootout that will come when we get our review unit. Uh, for now, we'll tell you that the 
Apple iPhone 6S's camera now features a 12 megapixel rear camera with a f2.2 aperture and a 5 megapixel front facing unit. On the other hand, the Galaxy S7 comes with a 12 megapixel rear camera at f1.7 aperture, and the sensor now sports much larger 1.4 micron pixels, which allows the camera to take in much more light and make far, more, far better performance in low light situations. Now, we weren't able to really spend a whole lot of time with the S7, as I said, but we did see that the phase detection autofocus embedded into every large pixel really makes autofocusing a snap. So that might be one big uh, trick up the sleeve of the Galaxy S7 when compared to the iPhone 6S. And finally, in software, it's the age-old battle of Android versus iOS. But we have some interesting developments in Android. As we see in the Galaxy S7, there is actually an option under Galaxy Labs that allows you to move all of the apps onto the home screens, much like the way that the iPhone 6S does. Now, that is a little bit disconcerting and troublesome, or worrisome rather, for a lot of Android faithful users who really enjoy their app drawers. And if this is the trend that's going to be moving forward, the S7 might just be a part of that bandwagon. But until we actually see that happen, we do see that Android and iOS have no longer a gap when it comes to the different applications you can run on them. It just matters which one of these you actually want to see on the daily and whether it's the iPhone's more glossy look or uh, the Samsung Galaxy S7's more, let's say, cartoonish look from time to time in TouchWiz. TouchWiz still has all of the different multitasking features as well, um, and they're kind of out of the way from the view of the user, so you can still use them if you go looking for the different things like multi-window and even the pop-up view. On the other hand, the iPhone 6S sort of relies on its recent, recent app screen in order to do multitasking, but it does go through it quite smoothly. Ultimately, it just really matters which one you want to see every single day. And if your preference is on one ecosystem over the other, at least you're going to have the same experience on both because all the apps are pretty much made available between the two. And so there you have it for this quick look at the Samsung Galaxy S7 and the iPhone 6S. Things were a lot closer between these two phones last year, but because the S7 has brought back expandable storage and the water and dust resistance, we are inclined to say that the S7 has done just enough to really differentiate itself from its predecessor. Now, we don't know what Apple is going to bring in the next version of the iPhone, but as this is the one that we have to work with in the 6S, uh, we are going to just have this comparison ready for you, and you can tell us what you think in the comments below. So keep it tuned to Android Authority for even more about the Galaxy S7, and we will see these two again in a comparison once we, once we get our review unit. So keep it tuned here because we are your source for all things MWC 2016.